that when we come here, we have to take somebody. We have to share that flyer. We have to share that post and say, hey, there's something happening. And so we want to thank you very much for coming and for inviting other people. Once again, we want to express our great appreciation to the amazing worship uh, people who have supported this program. And also, we are live on their platform. We want to thank the Adventist youth with a mission who have also supported this program, and we are live on their program. We want to thank the Faith Church International who have supported this program, and we are live on their platform too. And we want to thank the Hebrew Choir in Uganda and the Hebrew Choir outside Uganda. We want to express our great appreciation. We also want to express our appreciation for Hera's Choir, that are coming on board and we have listened to their songs. We want to thank God so much for Herald Choir. And I know we are also sharing this on their platform live to their viewers, subscribers, and many other people that they have invited. We want to thank God for Baraton TV, where we are broadcasting from at the University of Eastern Africa Baraton in Kenya. We want to thank also our viewers in Manila, the Philippines, our viewers in the UK, our viewers in Minnesota, USA, and our viewers in many other places, remembering those who are at home in East Africa, in Kampala, in Kigali, Gujumbura, Dar es Salaam, Arusha, Dodoma, Nairobi, Eldoret, Mombasa, Mogadishu, and Addis Ababa, and many other places. May the Lord bless you so much. As you join us on the various platforms, please indicate where you are viewing from and always throw in a comment. If you are touched by something, you can always write it again on that platform. You can always again say amen by writing it on that platform. And in case you have a response, you want to accept the Lord, you would like to be assisted to understand a little more, you can always again indicate your interest right there on the platform where you are viewing us from. And so we want to welcome you so much. We are going to pray and then get into the word of God for today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the great favor that you have done for us to allow us to come onto this platform and share your word across the world. Bless your word, dear heavenly Father. And we pray, dear heavenly Father, that what is impossible with human beings may be possible with God as your word is simplified and understood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, uh, we began on Sunday. And remember, this is a revival week. It's a revival week. A revival week, that means that we, we, we are already converted. We already believe in the Lord, but we are being revived. You know, it's like you are, you are waking the dead or you are waking those who are dying. You are resuscitating them so that they can come back to life. And we are looking at We've been looking at the various ingredients that can facilitate our revival, the revival of our faith. And one of those things that we have seen that is very critical, number one on Sunday, we looked at the Word of God. We said that the, our life can be with or without the Word of God, but it will not be the same. The, our life with the Word of God is not the same as our life without the Word of God. That's what we said on Sunday, and I believe that even that message is available on the various platforms. It is available on video format. You can listen again. And we came yesterday on Monday, and we talked about that unless you are, until you look inside, you have not seen anything. And we said that if there is to be any true revival, a waking up from sin, it will not come from us studying the events around us. It will not come from us looking at other people we worship with or the neighbors or looking at how close we are to the end of the world looking at the signs. No. If there is any true revival that will come, my brothers and sisters, it will begin by us looking inside. Looking inside ourselves. And we looked at scripture yesterday that every time God's people looked inside, they were completely changed. Even the way they viewed the world completely changed. And so we want to invite you once again, if you have not seen that video, you can always find it on the platform where you are viewing from. And once you find the video, listen to it and again share with somebody else so that the word of God can bless God's people wherever they are. And so today we want to talk about another component of revival. Revival. Remember, this is about revival. It's a revival week of spiritual emphasis. We are reviving ourselves over things that we already know, but we are telling ourselves once again. There is always a time for evangelism when we reach out people with the messages they never knew anything about. 
But today, on this platform and this week, we are just reviving ourselves to what we already knew, but so that we can grow spiritually, we can wake up if we were dying, and, and we, can, we can also, if we were dead, we can resurrect from the spiritual death. And so today, friends, I would like us to read about prayer. I want us to talk about prayer. Because without prayer, there cannot be revival. And there are many prayers in the Bible. If you read the Bible, the prayers are not few. There are many. There is a, a, a significant prayer of Solomon in the Old Testament. When Solomon was praying to God after he was given leadership, there is a prayer of Solomon. There are prayers of David. The Psalms are made of prayer. There is even a prayer of Daniel when he discovered after reading that actually they are supposed to leave and go back to their country from Babylon because their time was up. There is a prayer of Daniel. And when you come to the, when you come to the, to the New Testament, there are prayers where disciples went to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. And Jesus taught them what we now call the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And from there, we have learned the importance of prayer. We know the text in the Bible, a very short text, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. We know that one. We are supposed to pray. But do we pray? Or do we pray correctly? Because without prayer, there will never be revival. Prayer is what connects us with God. Prayer is the link between you and your God. If you are not praying, the link is broken, and it's broken on your end, not on God's end. God's end is open, but the link is broken on your end. And so prayer is so important for revival that no revival meeting can be discussed without prayer and without talking about prayer. Prayer is so important. And so Jesus talked about the Lord's Prayer, and he taught us how to pray. Then you read John 17 and you find the prayer of Jesus, the long prayer of Jesus, where he emphasized that they may be one. As I am in you and you are in me, that they may be in me. And Jesus is praying a long prayer. And these are important prayers that have been prayed in the Bible. You even find Apostle Paul praying and saying, now I kneel before the Father. You know, and so there are many prayers in the Bible. But today, I want us to focus on Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46. We read this section and learn something about prayer so that when we put it into our lives, truly, brothers and sisters, we shall be revived. So what does the Bible say? Let's turn to our Bible. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46. And I will read. The Bible says, that then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Jesus is in Gethsemane. And once we say that, a good Bible student will already know where we are. In case you don't know, there's no problem. That's how all of us started. Gethsemane is where Jesus went to pray. From there he was arrested, he was persecuted, and then crucified. He died and later on he resurrected. So Gethsemane is the last point where we see Jesus before his arrest and crucifixion. And so Jesus has arrived at the place called Gethsemane with his disciples. He's with all his disciples, the Bible says. And he tells all his disciples that sit here while I go and pray over there. He tells all his disciples, sit down. I'm going to pray. This is very serious. Instead of telling them, come, we pray together, he tells them, sit here, I'm going over there to pray. And then, let's continue. And then he, was at seven, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. After he tells the rest, sit down, he tells Peter, and then when the Bible says two sons of Zebedee, it's referring to James and John. So he takes Peter, James and John, and he tells them, you come, guys. Everybody is sitting down, but he calls these three and say, hey, let's go. And as he moves further, he begins, he begins to be sorrowful. Verse 38, he said to them, he's now speaking to Peter, James, and John. He has left the rest seated behind there. 
He says, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. And he says, stay here and watch with me. He tells them, stay here and watch with me. And then verse 39, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He leaves again Peter, James, and John at this point. He has left the first group. He is leaving the second group. He is going a little further and he's praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But not as I will, but as you will. This cup of our sins, this cup that he must die on the cross, is what Jesus is praying about. Verse 40. Then he came to his disciples. Now he came back after praying and found them sleeping. And he said, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Verse 41. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus comes back and finds them sleeping. Peter, James, and John, and he says, surely, guys, I pulled you aside to pray with me. Couldn't you even pray for an hour? Just for an hour. For just within the hour. Verse 42. Again, a second time. He went away and prayed. He left them and went to pray. Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me until, unless I drink it, your will be done. This time he says, Father, if I must go to the cross, if I must die, if I must suffer, then let your will be done. It's okay. The prayer is changing. Verse 43. He came back and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. He came and found they were sleeping. And he had told them, please, don't sleep, pray with me. And so the Bible says in verse 44, he left them. This time he didn't wake them up. He left them. Went away again and prayed the third time saying the same one. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, verse 45, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. In verse 46, he says, Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The message I would like to share with you, friends, today is the 10 lessons from Gethsemane. Lesson number one. A prayer environment is very important. When Jesus finished the last supper with his disciples, Judas had already left. Jesus would have stayed in that room and continued having prayers there with his disciples. But it was time for the Passover and there must have been a lot of activities around that place. And Jesus decided to go with his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't go there to wait to be arrested. He went there to pray. The prayer environment is very important. Many of our prayers are ineffective because the environment is poor. Remember, friends, prayer is not supposed to change God. It is supposed to change you. So the environment that is needed is supposed to favor you praying and not favor God listening. God can listen to prayer from anywhere. The problem is you and me and not God. God can hear you from anywhere. Even in the middle of loud music, which is in the highest volume, ear-splitting music, if you say the prayer to God, God will hear you loud and clear. The problem is not God. The problem is us. And so when we talk about the appropriate environment, it is not an environment appropriate for God, but an environment appropriate for you and for me. An appropriate environment. Prayer environment is important. When you read verse 36, the Bible says, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here. He chose a place to pray. When you want to experience a revival, even in your house, 
you need to choose a place to pray. Place may not just be a location in the house. Place may also be a location in time. And there are many Christians who for some reason had chosen 3 a.m. in the morning as their location for prayer. And we applaud them for that decision. But when we ask them why they chose 3 a.m., the reasons were not convincing. When the reason is that that is the time when the demonic forces are most active, who told you? When you say that is the time when it's very quiet and God listens, God does not need a quiet environment to listen to us. When you say that 3 a.m. is the time when the whole world is quiet, you need to study geography and know that when it's 3 a.m. in one place, it could be 3 p.m. in another place. The reason why you should choose 3 a.m. or any a.m. or any other time is if it is the most appropriate time, place for you. Otherwise, let's not create holiness out of 3 a.m. No. Any time is good time for prayer. And if you select a time, choose that time and pray. Don't select a time when you are sleeping. There are many people who are advancing in age and so they easily run out of prayer. By 3 a.m. they are awake and they will be awake until the next day. But you cannot demand from tired teenagers who are hyperactive who fall asleep deeply to wake up at 3 so that they are praying while dozing. They will set the moment of prayer. We need to select an appropriate time and place of prayer. For prayer to be effective, choose a place in time and even a place in location. Thank you so much, Hebrew Choir. We get to the second part of the message today. My brothers and sisters, we are looking at the 10 lessons from the ceremony, and we are looking at the second lesson, friends. The first one, you have gotten it. A prayer environment is very important. The second one is prayer partners are chosen. You see, Jesus chose, he selected. He had 11 disciples. Remember, this time, uh, Judas had already disappeared to go and betray him. So he had 11 disciples with himself, 12. And he gets here and he tells everybody, sit down. And after he tells everybody, sit down, he picks three of them. And he says, come, let's go this other side. And so he selects because you cannot always uh, engage in prayer with everyone. You can't go to any church and worship. You know that. You can't just walk and say that anywhere there is a prayer, is good prayer to be, it's good to be there. Because you may not be of one accord with those who you are praying. And if you are not of one accord, remember the early church in the book of Acts, those prayers are not going anywhere. You need to be of one accord. And so you need to select where, but you also need to select who you pray with. It, it needs to be very important. Select where, but also select who. The third point that I would like to share with you, uh, my brothers and sisters, is that there are prayers you don't just express anywhere. While God is listening, you must also be careful who else is listening. When you read Matthew chapter 26, verse 37, it says that Jesus took Peter and the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, that's James and John, and then in verse 38, he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Why didn't he tell the whole group that his soul is sorrowful? Why didn't he tell everybody that he is, he is feeling like dying, you know, exceedingly to the point of death? He feels this is too bad. Why didn't he tell everybody? Because not everybody can handle your issues. If you are to grow spiritually, there are things you cannot share with certain people because they will use it against you tomorrow. They say, ah, yeah, we, we know that guy. You remember the other time he was praying about his problem with witchcraft? He is not fit to serve this year. Just leave him. And they will say that for the next 50 years until you die. And so there are prayers you don't share with people because those people are not God. They will not be able to bear the reality of what you are going through. And so Jesus selects three people 
who he was sure that they could handle what he was saying. And after pulling them from the others, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful to the point of death. The others would have, would have started discussing and say, I thought this guy he can even raise the dead. He's talking about sorrowful to the point of death. Is he okay? Is everything fine? Is this how things should be? And so Jesus selected. You need to know that there are prayers you don't just express anyway. Even when they say write your prayer, there are prayers you only speak to God. Remember what Jesus said about prayer. He says if you want to pray, go to your house. Don't stop outside the compound. Go into the room. Don't stop in the living room. Go into your inner room and then don't just start praying. Lock the door and pray in secret. Because when you pray in secret, there is some effectiveness and God answers that, that prayer. Because there are things that people should never, ever get to hear that you are praying about. And God who hears in secret will answer you. There are prayers that while we are praying to God, see to it that not everybody gets to hear about it. Because you may write it and somebody can pick handwriting and pick your circumstances and know who it is. And that's why in some places it has been safe to just say, I have a silent prayer. I have a thanksgiving. Because you come and tell everybody that, hey, guys, I want to thank God my business has succeeded. I now have... 10 million shillings. I now have $100,000. When the prayer ends, you start getting texts and phone calls. Can you lend me some? Can you lend me some? And those who are asking will never repay even a single cent. And they will disappear even from that. Time. There are prayers you don't make in the present. So, uh, and so we continue. The fourth point is Remember the words of Jesus, may your will be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Prayer does not demand from God, but it allows God in his wisdom to give what is right for us. If we are really to live a life of Christianity, doesn't die and because my grandparent died, God is not fair, it is not right, then they backslide. Prayer, true prayer does not demand from God. True prayer approaches God as a wise God who knows what is right. That even though it may be painful, God knows that that is what is right for you. This is what we learn from Gethsemane. Point number five. Point number six. You can't depend on prayers of others. There is no guarantee they are praying. When Jesus came back, did he find his prayer team praying? Sleepy. For me and every church, there is no guarantee. Or even when they prayer is the personal prayer. Personal prayer. You pray. Number six. We have said you can't depend on others. 
there is no guarantee they are praying. Will Jesus In our spiritual life is personal prayer because all these other public all these other public prayers we do them through these public prayers we do them with an interest of impressing people in 21 hours prayers. number nine you can't force people to pray jesus did not force them to pray he came he told them oh you guys are sleeping Second time he found them sleeping, the Bible says that Jesus just walked away. Look at what the Bible says. He says in verse 43, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And verse 44, he left them. You can't force people. You can't force people to pray. You can't force people, you can't force people to pray. People must pray willingly. If you force them to pray, it is no longer prayer and it's not acceptable before God. You can do it as a habit to teach children. You can do it as a habit of an office, of an institution. But true effective prayer is when you have personal prayer of people who really trust God. You can't force people to pray. And number 10, After prayer, Jesus couldn't pray with him and told them, listen, he didn't have an attitude. At God for anything, including bad friends. But when you don't pray, you still remember people who didn't attend your wedding. You still remember people who didn't come for your child's birthday. You still remember people who let you down. It's because you don't pray. But when you pray, you are ready even for friends who let you down. You say, hey, let's work together. You didn't work with me last year, but let's work together this year because you have prayed. You have power above keeping grudges of the past. And when you pray, you are also ready for Judas who is coming. When you pray, you are ready for the mob that is coming with the Judas. When you pray, you are ready for the persecution that you will go through. When you pray, you are ready for crucifixion. And Jesus said, whoever comes after me must bear their own cross and follow me. If you are to carry your own cross, you must make a habit of praying. If there is any revival that we expect, that revival will come as a result of praying. And so I want to challenge you, my dear viewer, that we need to pray. We go through many challenges. Even preaching like this, you find equipment failure, network failure, power failure, things just happen. 
you know, in the middle of the sermon, the sermon goes off. In the other end, you are wondering, what happened? Then after a few minutes, comes back again. And prayers are going on to overcome this kind of thing. You need to pray. Do what you must do here. Yes, but pray. Because some of these things are demonic. Because it works well all the time. But when it comes to the critical time when it is needed to function as it was functioning during the test, it fails. What are you supposed to do? Not sit there and wonder about the wisdom of people who are running it. But pray. There is a power in prayer. We need to learn to pray, my brothers and sisters. Pray that you will not enter into temptation. Pray to be prepared for what is coming ahead of you. Pray. The challenge today is if we are to be revived, if we are to grow spiritually, we must pray. And how do we pray? We have received 10 lessons from Gethsemane. They may come in three weeks, part one, part two, part three, for today's presentation, but listen to them anyway. We are going to pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are here with this viewer. We have learned something about prayer, and we wish to revive our prayer life. Revive us again, O oh Lord. Make us champions, not of prayer before the church, not of prayer in the family, but champions who privately engage God in prayer, that our private prayers will be the strongest prayer. Pray, dear Heavenly Father, that that will be possible. And bless these meetings as they go on this week until the end. Save us from disruptions of the enemy. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we will be overcomers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Prayer, 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 prayer is a secret to revival. Today's message has come in three parts. Ten lessons. And you can always enjoy on this platform. This platform is coming to you courtesy of Herald's Choir, Uganda, Hebrew Choir in Uganda and outside Uganda, Adventist Youth with a Mission, Faith Church, International, Amazing Worship, and above all else, being broadcast by the Baraton TV from the University of Eastern Africa Baraton. This is your week of revival, week of spiritual emphasis. May God bless you. Please come back tomorrow again and let's pray for strength so that this will go well and go better beyond our expectations. Bring somebody and share these messages for they will remain there for you to share with others. May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you all our viewers from across the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.